This is Alex. And this is Isaac. Over the years, we have embarked on many adventures together. And we are going to float down towards the Flathead Valley uh, in the winter. Are you good at construction? Yeah, I was born for that. What do you think the chances of success are? 100. 100? He thinks we can tell. All right. Yes. Action. Yeah, action. Oh my god. Now it's time for another big one. Over the next 10 days, we will be exploring places we've always wanted to see in our home state of Montana by bike. 500 miles from my house to the Idaho border. Along the way, we will ask each other about our friendship and explore the idea of what makes a good adventure buddy. Excellent. ever had any conflict in the relationship? We had, a, we had a big disagreement a couple of years ago for sure uh, over a job and uh, I think it, it changed a lot of things for us. We didn't we didn't end up hanging out for like six months a year or something like that after that. How far we've we gone? Three miles. We've gone three miles. Maybe oh. four. Perfect. And I looked at Andrew, I was like, how far do you think they're going to get before we get a call that they need something or forgot something? <laughs> Sweet. Got it. Nice saver. Bye, Fitzy. We left Isaac's home in Big Fork and began our journey south. The feeling of having everything we needed for 10 days, all with us on two wheels, was exciting. It was that unique sort of excitement that comes with not knowing what the outcome will be. Have you guys ever had a disagreement? Disagreement? Yeah, yeah, there's been a few. Just, uh, I think there was a major one, just some miscommunications. Our average speed is 9.7 miles per hour. And we've climbed a dismal 4,120 feet. There's a bailout there. And then there'll be a, probably a bailout here. It's probable. I like that word. I don't think we stopped being friends, but we definitely took some time off, you know. It's like uh, I went to France for a few months, maybe four or five months. You guys didn't hear from Isaac. We just didn't, didn't talk for a while. Just like, it was a weird period, yeah. Last night, uh, we rolled into camp, what was it, like 9.30? Yeah, 9.30. 9.30, rode 56 miles. Yeah. We saw a wolf, a wolf that might have been injured or playing, I couldn't tell, but we saw a wolf. We just had to give each other some space, maybe. Uh, I know I needed some space. There were uh, some things that I needed I think to see Alex change a little bit in, and maybe some things that I need to accept. We lost a shoe. I think uh, the morning tanning is going to be good. Classic day two move, you know. We're in a single track portion below uh, an area called Elk Creek in the Swan Valley. Day two, it's so hot and no wind. Yeah. So we're uh, in our wrestling uniforms again. There's so much to love about traveling by bike. I think you travel slow enough that you get to experience everything fully and fast enough that you can still cover a large distance with reasonable effort. Yeah, I think that's how relationships grow, right? If there's no, there's no challenge or there's no disagreements, I think it's a bit stagnant. First stop, where we saw Huckleberries. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. that candy-like. Yeah. Generations have been eating this. Yeah. We 
talked. We both apologized. I, I think that, um, yeah, there were some things that needed to be said, and, and it made our relationship stronger. So yeah, we became friends again. Hey, Stroll. Yeah. Where are we at? Top of this one. Top of our climb. Yeah. I think time helped. You know, you choose your friends, right? So there's something here, and we should probably dig into it, right? We had so many epic adventures before that. So that led me to believe we could have a lot more after that. So that's like a second phase, a much more connected phase. We were almost to Sealy Lake and then uh, big, big blowout on my bike. Always my bike. Big flat. Look at that. We're gonna need more film and more tubes. <laughs> Thanks for the help, senor. Back on the road. tire's gonna make it all the way to Sealy Lake? Definitely. Okay, let's go. What do you think? Good enough for a bath? I think it's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> mm. It's a bit slimy. It's got the marsh vibes. I love it when people are excited. I feed off of people's excitement that way and all I had to do was just take Alex on an adventure and see his stoke and his like request to do more and his like, hey, where'd you find out where this place was? Or so Alex is very good at questions, always. He kept asking questions and I kept saying, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it. And then, yeah, that's, that's how it went. I always say that whenever you meet Isaac, your experience of Montana is transformed and elevated. <laughs> oh bro, you gotta try it. Alex's first Twinkie bite. You gotta make sure you take up. <laughs> I think Alex is a great adventure partner because he's almost always optimistic, even when it's horrible. Like I've rarely seen him lose it in a bad situation. We've been in a, a few. Isaac's got some of these skills that I don't have, and I admire a lot of them. Isaac can build things, Isaac can find places, and Isaac can bring excitement all the time, and these skills, I think, are really valuable. It makes a good combo for an adventure. Alex always on an adventure is to have fun and that's always my goals too so uh, it meshes well with me. Yeah, Isaac and I have had our moments of failure in our friendship. But that's what any good adventure is all about. Going through hardships, prevailing, and coming out stronger at the end of it. I think we both appreciate each other more now. It's special to have a friendship where you can bond over seeking objectives and being uncomfortable. The best moments will always take trust and collaboration. And I think it's rare that we have that. Isaac called and got us somehow magically a night at this wonderful little cabin that was reserved on the internet, but he called and it wasn't. 
So we got a permit, rode out of town, got to the cabin after a 25 mile ride and started a fire. That's pretty much it. It's really pretty. From this cabin on Twin Lakes, we headed out into our last day of biking before we reach out the border of Idaho at the end of our trip. Well, we found private property on our route. So we're stuck here now. Got to backtrack many miles to get to the highway that's back there. Classic. Trips like this are often goal-oriented, and it felt weird coming home at the end of our ride because this one wasn't. We set out to try something new, discover new areas of our home, and a little bit more about our friendship. And I think that's what we did. Yes! <laughs> Idaho! Woo! There it is! Right, yeah. Now we're in Idaho? Now we're in Idaho! Yeah. Oh yeah, there it is. Wow! Yeah. Bring it! Come on! Oh, thanks, dude. Thank you. Good times. Yeah. 500 miles? Something like that? Who knows? I'll have to check. Who knows? Who cares? A long way. Many memories. <laughs> A long yeah. way. Woo! Feels weird. It does. It's done. Did you guys ever make it to Idaho? <laughs> I, I think we did. <laughs> Maybe, sort of. We saw the, we never saw the Idaho sign, but one side was Montana and the other side was yeah. Idaho, we suppose. I think it wasn't important. It really didn't matter how long we rode or even if we made it exactly to Idaho. It was a journey not only to rediscover our home, but our friendship. And I'm pretty thankful for that. Another one, and many more to come. Yeah, we rode like uh, to the end. That's the end. <laughs>